Well, let's let's just go to the skeleton for uh, for this assembly, and uh, and we'll start there. For, oh, um, one thing I should mention is you'll notice that this is a skeleton part, and uh, you know in other talks I've promoted the idea of a skeleton assembly, and so the skeleton assembly still has its place, I would say, but with multi-body, finding that I like a skeleton part even better in some cases, and actually most cases now, where the multi-body function is leveraged to uh, define and uh, differentiate the different parts of an assembly in a skeleton part. If that makes any sense. And so um, that's a one, I think, one curious difference that uh, you might want to explore. All right, so you'll notice here in this skeleton, I define the dome or sphere as well as the um, band, if you will, are defined here in the skeleton. And I'm going to focus first on the, uh, the dome or the sphere itself. OK, so a soccer ball, if you were to look at a soccer ball, you'll see it divided into what looks like pentagrams and hexagons. And so what I want to start with here is uh, a sketch of a, uh, of a hex. And so we'll start with a sketch. And this sketch is going to be on a plane that goes through an axis. And I'm going to put the axis at the intersection of these two stationary planes then this new plane will be at an angle. And so I can now make a sketch that's on a plane that has a new angle. But I'd like for this sketch to not only be at this angle, but also at a distance from the middle. So I'm going to go the next step, make another plane that's offset from this one in distance. That's going to be where my sketch will be. And as a reference, I'll use a, a stationary or default plane. This gives me a plane that I can sketch a rectangle on. I'll pop up a palette real quick and throw a hexagon. Drop the hexagon on the middle here. You'll notice that there's one dimension for the hexagon, and that is the length of a side, which is which is fine for my purposes right now. Okay, so. I now have a hexagon that is on a, um, on a plane that's offset from the middle or center of the sphere. And this plane is also at an angle. OK? And um, I want to rotate this X because there's going to be, as you were, if you were to look at it, a soccer ball, you'll see that there's an array of hexagons, five of them around the pentagon. And so what we'll do is we'll take this curve, we'll make a pattern of it that is not at a dimension, but a around an axis. There'll be five of these, and there'll be, they call this angular extent. You'll notice this is a little different from versions. There is my hex, and you'll notice if I were to, to move, all these move together. And you'll also see that the face of the hex isn't quite oriented like I want it to be. Back to and change the definition of the hex. I'm going to rotate this so that the flat is towards that 5 uh, uh, pentagon, pentagram. It will be a 30 degree rotation. And you'll see my x is still perfectly defined. Now it's starting to look more like that uh, ball that we wanted to look like. Now the question is, what are these two parameters need what do these need to be 
such that these two lines are coincident. Then that would make the pentagram at the top surrounded by hexagram. Well, ask for a measurement between, say, this point, that point, currently misaligned by seven some odd inches. I'll make a feature of this measurement. And then this point, this point, off by about an inch or so, will make this one also a feature. Now in my model tree, you'll see I've got two measures indicating the deviation or the misalignment. So if I go now and ask for a feasibility study that takes this measurement and sets it to zero, as well as the second one, by varying not that number, but this one and that one. There's my angle. There's that radius. So the range for the variation, I want it to be, get, open it up a little bit so that we can make sure that we encompass the range of values that we want. And then for the radius, let's say I want to make it something small and to make it something maybe big, too. Now I can ask for a computation. Is it feasible to bring those two edges together? You see how it identified specific values to line up these two points. Now that has changed or modified my model, but I'd like it to always do this. And that's what this button does. Check mark that says create an optimization feature where you can give it a name. So you'll notice in my model tree now, I've got the two measures as features and then a uh, feasibility or optimization feature where I can change the side of my hexagon, change it to say 80. You see how the other values update such that it is always maintained or feet. So you see how I've managed to get the pentagram, the apex of the sphere, and the identical hexagrams all lined up. Okay, so this is the, the main thrust of the sphere, because we've got now the helix, oh, I mean the, uh, the hexagons placed around a radial point. And so the rest is copying them or moving them or mirroring them to various places to identify the locations for the various other uh, pieces. I did that in this case by identifying uh, centers, points, and then coordinate systems to identify the location of each of the different uh, pentagons and um, hexag hexagons. Now I've got the location of each, recognizing now that the pentagon and the hexagon can both be broken up into triangles. Five triangles for the pentagon and six triangles for the hexagon. I'm, so I'm sorry, Leo. Go ahead. I, I missed. How did you arrive at the locations for those coordinate systems? Oh, uh, I did that by identifying the centers of the. Oh, I, I hear what you're saying. I used sketch function. Use the sketch function to sketch points.
These points are geometry points. These points are construction points. So when you go and create a sketch, you can sketch points. Then these points are simply a line to the geometry that I've already created. Here I've got a construction circle. To identify the sphere uh, extent, that puts those points on the outside. I put points on the uh, uh, on the inside. That's mid mid plane or mid uh, well, yeah, just the, the midpoint. And then these points are the points that are used for centers for the coordinate systems. Made a a pent one coordinate system. Pent two and a pen three. So you see the pentagram is at the, you can call it the apex, and then the, the bottom also has a pentagram, a pentagon. And then there's a row of pentagons just underneath the first row of hexagons. You've got a pentagon, a row of hexagons, a row of pentagons, a row of hexagons, and so on down the sphere. Is that what you were asking, Kevin? Yeah, uh, I see how you got the points and therefore the coordinate systems for the those on above the uh, horizontal plane there in your sketch geometry. How did you actually create those coordinate systems below your horizontal plane? Okay, okay. Oh, mirror. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost, almost exactly a mirror. So. This mirror is a mirror of this hexagon. So this hexagon mirrors between the first row of hexagons and the second row of hexagons around a plane that goes through that uh, edge in the center. Uh, I see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then the sketch uses those references to create an array of points, then mirrored and then moved. Pretty slick. Pretty slick. Okay, so so now the the pentagon is five triangles and the uh, hexagons are six triangles. So now we got to make triangles. So I did a, a sweep. Sweep. The reason I did it as a sweep is because I can pick the edge run the sweep on, and then the sketch, sketch here, sketch goes through that sketch point that I did before. And so that puts the edge, or the apex of the triangle, at the apex of the um, uh, uh, pentagon, you see that? That, that sets up my angle for me without having to worry about what the angle is. And then my blocks then are now three-quarters of an inch. Because I did it as a sweep, I didn't have to create any planes or anything. Just pick the curve, and it runs that length. I did this as a solid. Most of my skeletons have uh, traditionally been all surface. And the benefit of a surface is that they don't automatically find intersections. I can define multiple bodies using surfaces and merges. But now I've done it as a solid, and I'll show you why. The extrude then runs straight, normal to the pentagon sketch, if you will. That is all I need to define the triangle and all the angles defining the triangle that makes up the pentagon. And I did both of these features of edit definition. These are solid features. This is a removed material. And you'll notice now in A7 also, there's a body options tab. And this is going to be important um, because you must recognize it and must identify the body option, especially if you're looking to make a cut. 
But the cut requires something to cut. Otherwise, the feature fails. If you ask for a cut and the cut fails, look to your body options and make sure that you're cutting the right body. So I've got six bodies in this skeleton. And now I'm making sure, and I've renamed them. So the pentagon triangle body that I wanted to use to cut. So I can do these two solid features and don't have to do them as surfaces and then merge them. Solid feature, it finds the intersections automatically. Let's do now the next sweep. You notice in this one is a sweep just like the other. The sketch, though, is slightly different. Plus, the uh, point is over the middle of the hexagon someplace. Then this extrude is also a solid cut, but its body is now what would have been body two if I hadn't renamed it. So these are two separate bodies now in the same skeleton part. So this triangle is repeated five times to make up all the pentagons. This triangle is repeated six times in all of the identical shaped dots. So two more coordinate systems. Now these two coordinate systems determine the, uh, the base if you will, the base of the triangles, so that each triangle has a square frame of reference. But it, when you go to cut it or mold it or whatever you want to do with this triangle, it has a square frame of reference. And then, getting back to Zach's points, these offsets provide clearance. In an unambiguous way. Now, for my puzzle, I actually affix magnets to each face. These holes are the holes that accept the magnets. And then the rest of these features face stand. So that's all that's required to find the entire puzzle. So putting them together have the Penta assembly made up of three triangles, or five triangles, arrayed in a pattern. And the hexa assembly is six triangles arrayed in a pattern. which is then patterned. And there you have it.